So we've created the table and the fields in our database and I've been away and added a, a small amount of data, just the, the key bits of information, so I haven't bothered with the email. So uh, I've got, we've got four borrowers, four um, books and I haven't entered any loan information yet, uh, but we'll do that a bit later on. So I just need to close these before we go any further because if I leave them open then um, that will cause an error in the next stage. So before we go any further, what I would normally do is I would create the relationships. So the relationships say how the tables in the database are linked together. They're the key thing in a relational database and that's where it gets its uh, name from. So to create the relationships we need to go to database tools and click on the relationships button and the first step is to select all the tables that we want to link together. This is very similar to the first stage in the query. So I've got my three tables and I'm just going to shuffle them around. I can enlarge them so we can see all of the fields, that's quite useful. I'm just going to shuffle them around so they're in the right order. So I'm going to have borrower on the left and I'm going to have book on the right and I'm going to have loan in the middle and the reason I'm going to do that is because the loan is the thing that links together the borrower and the book. So what we do uh, on this screen is we link together fields that contain the same information. So membership number in the borrower table and membership number in the loan table are the same thing. So we drag from one um, field, uh, field from one table and drop it on the corresponding field in the other table. And when we do that we get this uh, dialog that pops up. So usually it's going to be the primary key from one field um, and that will then become uh, or link to the foreign key in the other field. If you come across the term foreign key, it's just a field in a database table that's used as a part of a relationship to link to another table. So um, in this case, uh, membership number is the primary key in the loan table, but it's also the foreign key because it links to um, the membership number on the other table. So uh, we get this table here. We can link multiple fields if you want to. So if you've got compound keys in both tables, we can link all three um, fields, for example, um, but we don't need to do that in this case. At the bottom, it tells us the type of the relationship or the degree of the relationship. If it says something like one to many, um, then it's usually a sign that you've got your keys right. If it says uh, not determined, it usually means you've gone somewhere, uh, gone wrong somewhere. Uh, and what that tells you is the relationship between borrower and loan. So in this case, one borrower can have many loans, and that makes sense, doesn't it? Because you can have several books out at the same time, or you can have several books out you know, over a period of time, over the years. You can have as many books as you like. So if that's filled in, that's usually a sign that everything's going okay. Then you've got these um, three ch tick boxes, um, the first of which is enforce referential integrity. Now what that is, is a form of validation. So if you tick that, what it means is we can't enter a membership number in the loan table if there isn't a corresponding membership in the borrower table, i.e. we can't lend books to people that don't exist. And that um, means that you can only have meaningful data in the database. So that makes sense. If you tick that one, then you also get uh, the the next two uh, becoming enabled. Um, so we've got cascade, cascade update related fields and cascade delete related fields. So what they relate to is what you want to happen if either of those uh, fields is changed or the record is deleted. So if we tick cascade update related field, um, what that means is if we change a borrower's membership number then all of their corresponding loan records will also have the membership number changed. Because if we don't do that, if we change the membership number, then all of their corresponding loans will become unlinked. We won't know which books they've borrowed and all the loans, we won't know who borrowed them. So it makes sense to cascade updates. Similarly, cascade delete records controls what happens if a record is deleted. So if we delete a borrower, do we want it to delete all of the corresponding loans for that person? So you may or may not want to do that. You may or may not allow people to delete borrowers. So sometimes uh, regulations require you to keep records for a certain amount of time. Other times the Data Protection Act requires you to remove um, all of the records you know, after um, the customer leaves, for example. So wh what you choose here would depend on uh, the type of data that you're storing. So I would certainly go for cascade updates, although 
we're probably not likely to change that anyway. So once we click create, it'll it'll draw in a line to show you how they're linked. So traditionally, if you've looked at uh, entity relationship diagrams in books, for example, um, they usually have a sort of fork at one end of the line and just an ordinary um, single line at the other end. Access represents those um, using the infinity symbol rather than the fork and then a one at the other end. So that means a one to many relationship. So going the other way, and um, we'll drag ISBN onto the ISBN um, field. And again, we'll enforce referential integrity. ISBN's are unlikely to change, but just in case we mistyped it or something, then we'll, um, we'll cascade that update and then we'll click create and we can see that those things are joined. Now the benefit of joining them is that when we create a query that um, involves more than one table, it'll also join them in the query. You can leave them unjoined and then you can also do a similar thing and join them together when you create a query, but it's much easier to join them at this stage and you can do the, the referential integrity thing and use it as a form of validation. Because if we go now to the, the data, so that's done, we can just close that and we'll say yes to saving the changes to the relationship. So if we just get all the tables open again so if we just pick a, a person so we've got uh, membership numbers one two three and four and books uh, one two three three two one 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 and nine one one so if we want to lend uh, one of those so if we get the table loan so membership person one is going to borrow book one two three and we've defaulted the date and when it's due back and then person two could borrow a book 321 so that's all working quite happily then what about if we say person 5 and it's saying well it's saying what it's saying there is I can't leave that information blank so I need to put in a book as well so what about if person 5 borrows book 111 it's saying I can't add or change a record because a related record is required in table borrower so that's not a particularly friendly way of saying it but what it's saying is uh, Basically, there isn't there isn't a member five, um, so I can I need to go back. It won't let me save that record. So what about if I say person three uh, borrows book um, six six six? Similarly, it's saying I can't add that record because uh, a related record is required in table book, i.e., we're trying to lend out the book that doesn't exist. So that reference referential integrity tick box is quite useful in ensuring that all the data in our loan table makes sense so I'm just going to delete that record or in fact if you've got a record that you can't save because there's uh, information in it that's invalid if you just press the escape key it'll uh, delete that record that you're working on